When it comes to shaping your opportunity tree, think of user research as the lifeblood that nourishes it. The tree is a crucial tool that helps you map out desired outcomes, identify gaps or opportunities, brainstorm potential solutions, and design experiments to validate them. However, the quality of the tree, how robust, targeted, and effective it is, largely depends on the depth and accuracy of the user research you conduct. In this module, we're diving into a detailed look of user research, specifically tailored for mobile apps. We'll be offering you a comprehensive view of various research methods, each with its own set of benefits and limitations. But we're not gonna just dump a list on you. We're also gonna provide you with a decision matrix. This matrix is designed to help you weigh the pros and cons of each research technique against your specific needs and constraints so that you can make informed choices that best serve your mobile app's goals. So whether you're trying to understand why users are dropping off at certain stages or seeking to enhance specific features, the right research method can offer actionable insights that will help you optimize your opportunity tree and by extension, your product. So now it's time for you to master user research in the context of mobile apps. Before you venture out to gather new data, don't overlook the treasure trove of existing research that might be lying around in your organization. Dig into previous reports, sift through past presentations, and revisit interviews conducted in earlier stages of product development. These gems buried in these resources could potentially save you time, money, and effort. They can also provide a historical context that adds another layer of understanding to what you're currently seeing in user behavior. Existing research is like a springboard. It gives you a running start. Moving on, let's talk about app reviews. Now, these are the reviews your users leave on platforms like the App Store or Google Play. These reviews provide immediate feedback, good and bad, about your app's features, performance, and usability. They also help you understand where you stand compared to your competitors. But keep in mind, reviews often represent the extremes. People are either very happy or very unhappy. Middle ground users rarely leave reviews. And sometimes you have to watch out for fake or manipulated reviews that could skew your understanding. Another treasure trove of insights is customer support requests and complaints. These interactions identify real world problems that users are facing and are an ongoing source of raw, unfiltered feedback. Plus, it's an inexpensive source of research. The drawback here is that you may only be hearing from the most vocal users. It's often reactive information, addressing issues after they've already occurred, which may not give you the full picture. Session replays are like having a fly on the wall view of how users interact with your app. It's like looking over your user's shoulder, but without the creepiness factor. You can literally see where users get stuck, where they drop off, or what elements make them stick around. It's real world usage in action. The downside is that while you see what actions users take, you may not fully grasp if the behavior is representative of all users or just an individual occurrence. Heat maps provide a visual representation of user interactions within your app. Think of heat maps as your app's thermal camera, highlighting where users are most engaged. At a glance, you can pinpoint where users are tapping, dragging, or zooming in. But while heat maps show you what areas are hot or cold, they don't tell you why. That's why it's great to combine heat maps with session replay. User interviews are targeted conversations with your target group. These interviews are versatile and insightful, allowing you to explore a range of topics in depth. They can get rich qualitative data that surveys can not provide. Now the downside, they're resource intensive and time consuming. Plus, the quality of insights can be influenced by how skilled the interviewer is at avoiding leading questions or biases. If your app were a pipeline, Funnel Analytics shows you where it's leaking. Funnel Analytics offer a segmented view of your app's user journey. This allows you to see exactly where users are dropping off, helping you to focus your optimization efforts precisely where they're needed. The drawback here is context, or lack thereof. Funnel analytics will show you where the problems are, but not why they're occurring. That's why UXCAM connects funnels to session replays, so that you can not only understand where, but also why users are dropping off. Flow analytics show you the most common paths that users take through your app. These analytics can reveal unexpected pathways or bottlenecks that you weren't aware of. It's like Having a map that dynamically updates based on how users navigate through your app. 
However, they can be complex to analyze. And like funnel analytics, they may not reveal the motivations behind certain user paths. Let's shift our attention to jobs to be done effort surveys. If you've ever had an ergonomic evaluation at work, you'll get the gist of these surveys. The goal here is to quantify the effort needed to complete tasks. Think of these surveys as MRI scans for the user experience. They give you a detailed look at specific areas of the user journey and show you where you need to remove friction. By focusing on the actual tasks that users are trying to complete, you can pinpoint inefficiencies or hurdles that may be impacting the satisfaction and retention. However, the laser focus of these surveys is both a strength and a weakness. On the one hand, you get an in-depth insight into very specific tasks or user goals. On the other hand, because you're zoomed in so close, you might miss the forest for the trees. This means you could overlook systematic issues or broader user experiences that don't neatly fit into the task categories you've defined. Focus groups are a fascinating method of user research that lets you observe real people engaging in dialogue with your app. You get a room full of diverse viewpoints, which is fantastic for brainstorming and generating new ideas. Sometimes the discussion among participants can reveal concerns or highlight advantages that you haven't even thought of. But tread carefully. The dynamics of a group can sometimes skew the results. Dominant personalities may overshadow quieter participants, influencing the feedback. Also, the group selected may not fully represent your entire user base. The Net Promoter Score, or NPS, is a classic quick and dirty method for gauging customer loyalty. They're quick to administer, simple to analyze, and are an industry standard metric that allows you to compare your app's performance over time or even against competitors. On the flip side, NPS surveys don't provide in-depth insights. They give you a number, but that number lacks context. Also, scores can be influenced by external factors, like a user having a bad day, that might have nothing to do with your app. Usability testing is where rubber meets the road. It involves direct observation of users interacting with your app, usually while they complete specific tasks. The benefits here are immediate and actionable. You can see exactly where users struggle, hesitate, or succeed. You can tailor the tasks to align closely with your research goals. But once again, it's resource intensive. Also, because it's a controlled setting, it may not entirely replicate real-world usage, thus providing an artificial environment. A-B testing is like a scientific experiment of the app world. You have two versions, a control and a variant, and you monitor how a change in one variable affects user behavior. It's extremely focused and allows you to hone in on optimizing specific elements within your app, be it a call to action button or a new feature. However, A-B tests are limited in their scope. They look at the impact of isolated variables and you can miss the big picture. They won't tell you, for instance, how multiple changes might interact or how a change influences the user experience holistically. Last but not least, we have beta testing. This is your dress rehearsal before the big launch. You get real world insights because actual users are interacting with a near final version of your product. You can identify and fix major issues before they become a PR nightmare. The challenge here is management. It can be a logistical headache to coordinate with all testers, collect feedback, and implement changes. Plus, if your product isn't polished enough, beta testers can risk user dissatisfaction and negative early reviews. As we wrap up the exploration of the various user research methods, you might be wondering, which method should I choose? How do I balance benefits and limitations? Well, that's exactly what we're going to dive into next. In our upcoming module, we'll introduce you to a comprehensive decision matrix. We'll help you weigh the pros and cons of each method in the context of your project, enabling you to make an informed decision.